So content warning right up front, this is going to be a kind of depressing diatribe. And I'd like it not to be, honestly. I'd like to talk about something a little more abstract. But this morning around 5 a.m., my father-in-law passed away. And there is no way I'm going to be able to keep my mind on anything else today. Now, luckily, we, we recorded most of this show early this week because I don't know that I could really do humor today. Now, for those of you who haven't been following along with my personal life, I should let you know that this doesn't exactly come as a surprise. And my wife and I moved down to Georgia a few years back to help take care of him. And for like three years, he's been end-stage heart disease, end-stage liver failure, end-stage lung disease. And the, the, the fact that science and gumption kept him going this long is something of a miracle, but there's only so many times you can push that snooze button. And after he had a stroke last week, we all knew that he was on his way out, himself included. And I have to be honest with you, I always used to write off his tough guy act as bravado and bullshit, but it turns out he was, it was the real deal, right? You don't get tougher than he was in the last year or so. You watch a guy lose so much, his aspirations, his independence, his mobility. You watch a guy reduce like that, staring death in the face the whole time and, and keeping his sense of humor. And facing all these new challenges and all this bad news day after day, month after month, and cracking a fucking joke at it. That's the toughest I've ever seen anybody be. And of course, as I'm watching all that, I'm, I'm watching Lucinda and her sister cope with the imminent thought of losing their dad. Their mom passed away more than 20 years ago. They don't have, you know, aunts and uncles that they're particularly close to. So he was kind of the last link they had to that generation of their family. And obviously that's been hard. Uh, and they were dealing with all that internally, you know, while, while also trying to comfort him and take care of all the shit that he couldn't do anymore. And, and look, I, I don't want to turn everything in my life into a critique of religion, but it's hard not to when I'm watching atheist Lucinda and her Christian sister cope with the situation. You know, the, the exact situation that religion says it's here to help people cope with. Religion's time to fucking shine and seeing how little it helps. I mean, they have different personalities. They have different relationships with their dad and everybody grieves differently. So this isn't like a one-on-one -on -one comparison. But if religion was anywhere near the bomb that its apologists make it out to be in situations like this, it shouldn't even be in the same ballpark, should it? I mean, what, I, what I've seen over the last few years is my wife demonstrating exactly how atheism helps you cope with grief. You know, she was the one person in her family that knew there were no miracles going in. She never held out hope that God was going to hear some prayer or something and rethink his plan. She didn't waste her time or his dragging him back and forth to a church or bowing her head in silent prayer. And she didn't waste his time trying to convince him to say some magic words or another or to get right with Jesus. She, she, just, she just took care of all the shit that she knew that there was no God there to handle. And she knew that when it came time, there would be no lingering soul beyond the memories that people took away from his life. So she spent as much time as she could making more memories. We were more fortunate than most in that regard, and she took full advantage. And, and, and because she knew that she wasn't going to get a second chance in heaven at some point in the future, she said everything she wanted to say. She apologized, and she forgave, and she told him that she loved him, and she showed him that she loved him. And she knew that this was the most important thing that she could do. And, and now that we're on the other side of things, religion would have her fretting over where he went. Right. And I'm not just talking about heaven or hell here. If you consider the way that most Americans do their Christianity, there's no theological consistency and very little in terms of certainty. The wishy-washy a la carte form of spiritualism that pervades American culture makes room for ghost stories and mediums and all kind of bullshit that chips away at Christianity's traditional afterlife dichotomy. And, and where religion leaves her sister primed for charlatans that might offer to send or receive posthumous messages on her behalf, Lucinda can be the voice of reason that tugs her back towards realism. Hell, that exact scenario already played out once with their mom. And I know this is something we've talked about before, but it feels especially relevant today. Nothing helps you cope with death except coping with death. As long as you're a realist about it, you can start coping with it well in advance. Of course, you can, you can tell yourself right now that everyone you love is going to die. And you can use that knowledge to collect those memories now, to apologize and to forgive, to show them that you love them. 
You don't have to wait until somebody's old or sick. You can remind yourself of their impermanence right now and ask yourself what you'd most want to have done if they died in that moment. But it's a lot harder to do all that when you try to hide death behind some theological curtain or crowd it out of your mind with religious platitudes because it turns out that nothing is easier to cope with when you're in denial about it. It turns out that no problem is solved by pretending it doesn't exist. And it turns out that telling yourself you're ready doesn't work as well as admitting to yourself that you're not. I mean, I don't, don't get me wrong. I get the temptation to make up a paradise to put your deceased loved ones in. I, I get the appeal of that fantasy. But even if you could make yourself believe it, you owe your loved ones more than that. And for whatever it's worth, at least atheism lets you know that we all ultimately rest in peace.